There's one piece of software, software that's been, been haunting me ever since we got Apple Silicon, running Windows on ARM on that, and now Windows on ARM machines, and that's SQL Server. SQL Server is a really powerful database, and I've been using it for many years, and I want to have it running. So there's two new things I want to try. One of them is on the Mac to run SQL Server in a Docker image, and the other one running natively on the Surface Laptop 7, which has an X Elite processor in it. The Snapdragon X Elite is an ARM chip, so this is Windows for ARM. Two different approaches. This one, the one on Windows for ARM is kind of new. Let's see if either one of these work. Thanks to my buddy Sergey for giving me this command right here. Docker run, accept EULA, MSSQL password. Oh no, you saw my password. That's not good. And then we <laughs> map a port and let's get that latest server. Boom, unable to find image. What, if it's unable to find image, what are you doing? Oh, Ugh, I'm a dumb locally <laughs> it's pulling the image so the requested images platform linux amd64 does not match the detected host platform what this is telling me is that the image is actually an amd64 image and it's not an arm image but we're gonna see if it works anyway i mean i kind of suspected this to happen because i don't think there is an arm version of sql server so we're gonna have workarounds to run this now docker is running under arm if it's running an x64 or an amd64 image image, the translation might be happening internally. Let's take a look at the dashboard to see what we've got. We've got relaxed Nash and it's supposedly running SQL Server. Let's take a look at activity monitor here. Can we detect any x64 processes? If we sort by kind here. No, none of these seem to be related to SQL Server. When I run Docker PS, it appears to be running SQL Server. Basically confirms what Docker desktop just said. To query it, I could use SQL Server Management Studio on Windows. Um, I have Windows on this Mac. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can run Windows on a Mac and I run most of my .NET workflow that way. I'll link a video down below showing you how to do that. But uh, a Mac compatible version of that, it's not exactly the same as SQL Server Management Studio, but Azure Data Studio is kind of similar. It lets you query SQL Server and it has a Mac OS version for Apple Silicon. So we're going to get that. Plop that into applications and let's pop it open. Create a connection and we're connecting to SQL Server. I'm going to use a local connection. So that's a dot Let's go with SQL login for authentication. And remember that super secret password I pasted? I don't remember it. You might remember it, but I don't. That's this one right here. MSSQL SA password. Copy that. Now you need to enable trust certificate. So let's do that. This might seem like a tutorial, but it's not. I'm actually just doing it and trying this for the first time. So that's what you're watching. <laughs> My reaction to this. Oh, I'm excited now. This works because you see this list of databases that would not show up unless it actually queried the database and found those databases in there. So this is actually working. All right, all right, all right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, calm down, Alex. Let's leave everything else at default. Why the hell not? Connect. This is the master database, right? So this setup is a little bit strange compared to SQL Server Management Studio. It's a little different, but it appears to be actually working. By the way, Azure Data Studio is suspiciously looking like VS Code. I wonder, wonder what's going on there. I don't want to be connected to master. I want to be able to manage the the entire instance. So how do I do that? Let's leave the database field default and leave everything else default. What's on this advanced tab? I'm gonna leave that as default and connect. Enable trust certificate. I wish I didn't have to do that every single time, but there we go. We have databases, system databases. So that's the master model MSDB and tempdb that we saw. And now we should be able to create our own databases. I don't see a create database feature here, but let's do new query, paste, select version as SQL Server version and run. Wow. Okay. Look at that. There it is. Let's create database test DB run command completed successfully refresh. And there's our database. Yes. So now if I'm working on uh, Windows using Visual Studio, for example, I can connect to this instance running on my host machine, the Mac might need to do some network adjustments there. So the virtual machine can connect to that specific port. That is a huge relief. I'm glad that this is working. And that's pretty awesome. Now let's check out if we can do SQL Server on ARM directly on a Windows machine. For this, there is a pretty recent GitHub repository with some scripts by this person right here, Lucas Wolf. So I've cloned that repository and it's got the source and then scripts directory. And we've got a batch file. Let's run that one. Uh, I want this one, SQL 2022 developer. Here goes nothing. Do you want to allow this app to make changes? Yes. Running admin shell. Okay. Preparing SQL server setup. Okay. I've, I've been 
been here before. I've tried running SQL Server setup on an ARM-based machine and I failed. So let's see, maybe there's some kind of uh, really easy flag that I missed. In fact, I wanna check this out. Let's look at the script real quick here. Certainly not an easy script, but it's not too bad. Definitely a lot more work than I put into my installation. So thanks for that, Lucas. He's changing a bunch of registry keys over here. So that's maybe the key. I intended that pun. I'm not gonna apologize for my puns. Where are we here? This is done? Nope, still going. While it's installing, let's quickly pay the bills with a quick note from the sponsor of this video. This may look like your regular spreadsheet, but have you ever seen your spreadsheet execute Python scripts, visualize SQL data, or integrate JavaScript seamlessly? Well, that's what Quadratic does. It's an infinite spreadsheet that'll make developers feel right at home. You can drag and drop a CSV file and instantly transform it, either using formulas like you're used to or code. You can even import Python and JavaScript libraries that you love. And as a multiplayer platform, Quadratic enables teams to share, analyze, and update data in real time across the globe. I've started using it recently and Quadratic leaves other spreadsheets in the dust. It not only offers an expansive canvas, but also enhances it with AI driven tools for smarter, faster analysis right inside the interface. So if you're ready to elevate your data experience, the spreadsheet of the future is already here right now and you can use it for free. Just click on the first link in the description below. I got no success message. That does not look promising. Let's have a look at task manager here. SQL server, there it is. It's an X64 process. So that makes sense. This is running under Rosetta Translation. I did already install SQL Server Management Studio earlier. That one works. I'm gonna see if this connects. Now, I also noticed that through the Prism Translation, it's a bit slower than usual, but that's okay. If it works <laughs> for development purposes, that might be great. Authentication is gonna be, oh, good question. I don't know, a Windows, I guess? I didn't see anything in the instructions about authentication. So let's try Windows first. Wait a minute, what am I doing? Why would Windows is authentication work. It's not going to work out of the box. I didn't select the right server name. Instead of dot, you need to select browse for more database engines and it detects that there's a instance called SQL developer running locally. So let's select that one, Windows authentication and connect. And here I get the trust certificate setting similar to what I got on the Mac. Let's click yes. Whoa, login failed. Good Lord. It's the Microsoft account thing. Windows auth didn't work. Of course, SQL server auth with SA didn't work. I think I might need to look at the code here. Right here in the script in the install args we've got the instance name and the accounts so right now it's using the built-in administrators account which means it is using windows authentication so i gotta make sure that my microsoft account is part of the administrators group what a pain things can't just work the snapping may not be used with this edition of windows 10 it's because it's not windows 10 it's windows 11. let's go to user accounts and control panel change account type i am set to administrator so this is windows Windows home. It doesn't have certain features. If I check on the command line though, net local group administrators, I'll get a list of the administrators here. And we have administrator and Alex Z. And I wasn't using Alex Z to try and log in. Let's try Alex Z. So I'm going to switch this to Windows authentication and Alex Z connect. The certificate chain was issued by an authority that is not trusted. Trust the certificate to connect. Login failed for that account. I want to use the local account, not the Microsoft account. Why is this such a pain? Microsoft. Let's try this command. Net local group administrators, Microsoft account, and I'll add mine. System error five has occurred. Access is denied. Let's try running this as admin. Okay, finally. Aha. Now my Microsoft account at Gmail is listed. Let's try doing it again. Login failed. I'm going to try something. I'm going to go here to my name, click on it and change account settings, and then sign in with local account instead of this. Next. Now it's asking me to create a local account and password. There we go. You're almost done. Make sure you save your work. Sign out and finish. So easy. Who am I? Aha. SQL Server Management Studio, Database Engine, Local Machine, Developer Instance. And there we go. Now we have the name of the machine slash Alex Z. Ah, trust the certificate and connect. Come on. Login failed. Can I just log in as administrator? Oh no. Windows Hello is automatically logging me in. I need to hide. What a pain, huh? Password. Can I change the user? No, I, I don't want this. Okay, let's try this user right here. Oh no. I created a brand new user and now it's getting things ready for me. It may take a few minutes. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I've just enabled the administrator account on this machine and I'm going to try again. If this doesn't work, I don't know what we're going to do. Trying to get me with your advertising ID. SQL Server Management Studio, login as administrator. Ah. <laughs> Oh, now you're scared. Now you're working. See, sometimes you just got to threaten your computer and then it'll work. We're in, folks. 
database we're in and we got some databases here. I can just right click and go new database and do all the things. There's my new database. Boom. This is running. This is actually running and working. <laughs> of course, now I have the freedom to do all sorts of administration, the regular stuff, you know, accounts, logins and so on. SQL Server on ARM. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Uh, not SQL Server ARM, SQL Server forearm. No, no, it's nothing like that. It's just SQL Server running on an ARM hardware. Um, I wish it was SQL Server ARM, and I don't know what kind of differences in performance we're going to see from this, but it's working. And for a development machine, that should be enough. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up. If you really, really hated this video, give me a thumbs down, I guess, but <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.